okay. I mean, I've, uh, as long as my children are all healthy, for what I've been through in my life, um, it's all about health. Um, but there's a lot of things can be affected by that, um, which even generally not do normal daily things to a lot of people can be extremely difficult. But for me, um, I've got my, my kids and my, and my family and my partner, and it's all about everybody being healthy. Yeah, similar to Dad, after what we've been through in our lives, um, I must say I'm, I'm in a really good place, especially after the season starting again, getting back to pre-season. Um, my best peace of mind is on the football pitch. Um, so I'm in a good place. I've got a lovely girlfriend, got a, got a wee, wee puppy, so... I'm in, I'm in a really good place at the minute. I, I, I probably miss that. That's the one thing that obviously being an ex-footballer is missing it. But The football, the break? No, getting on the pitch. Yeah. Getting on the pitch and yeah. letting all your inhibitions just forget and just just get on with the, the thing that you love doing, really. Yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky. Well, it was um, my late wife, Denise. Um, she'd had an operation back in 2002, which went wrong. A cosmetic operation. Um, she was in hospital for eight months, off and on before she was completely discharged. For the initial period, she was six weeks on life support. Um, Callum was only 11. Um, sort of thing so that's when it became really apparent to me and the family and everybody how, how crucial and difficult life can be for you to cope with things um, and, and yeah it was quite difficult it was extremely difficult I mean, in that period that he's got better and then after about five years she had another operation to correct the operation she had in 2002 so 2007 she had an operation that went wrong. I became her carer full time, more or less, along with her parents, uh, Denise's parents. And I think for that two years, it was extremely difficult for me, and because I did a lot of different things, a lot of wrong things. You, know, you talk about drinking too much, gambling too much. Um, this is things that I did because I felt it was right. And it was a coping, I wouldn't say it was a coping mechanism, but I just felt this is what I needed to do in relation to what I was doing in my daily life. Out of the four kids, I was probably the luckiest because three years later on I went to Blackburn, I went into digs. I had, I had football, like we said at the start, I had football, I could get away. Um, so it was probably harder for the other three. Um, but. It's it's not easy, is it? It's not easy for anyone losing someone. People have been through a lot worse than what I've been through. It's not it's not easy. Um, but I was I, like my dealing with it was football and Blackburn helped me a lot. Um, but deal, dealing with it, club were very good because I think at that time and in the and in the round that period you had a you had a you had a breakdown I think and you didn't you weren't sure if you were going to continue playing. I was in the academy, yeah, and they let me have a year out. You know, and was it things catching up? More than likely, I would suspect it, it would have been. You don't go into depth of trying to work out or to try and quantify if it was or if it wasn't. But Callum had that time, and it was, and it was, although I was pushing him, having been the footballer and the lifestyle and everything else and how great a life it could be, and I'm still pushing him, it's, it's like you can only push people so far. Yeah, it does. It does these days, definitely. Yeah, it's um, it's an important topic because there's a lot of boys that struggle with it and they won't won't even talk about it. There's a lot of boys that are embarrassed to talk about it, um, and it's important to talk about it because if you don't, it'll just get worse and worse and it'll bubble up in the back of your head. Um, I, I know I know plenty of boys that have had it who I've played with who have stopped playing football who have then had it uh, after losing their careers and stuff. It's such a good change of room here and when I was at Aberdeen I must say the boys are it's tight knit you're all you're all your best pals you, you, you see you see each other more than you see your families most of the time I have seen boys with with mental health 
and some boys deal with it well, some, some boys don't, but the only thing I would say is just talk it, to anyone. Just talk about it, because it's so important. I've, I, I had, I've had one stint my whole life where I was really bad after I'd done my knee for the second time. I was, gonna, I was 17, I'd done my ACL the second time, just came back from my first one, because uh, I'd done the first one when I was 15. And I was just, I said to Dad, I was like, Dad, I can't do it. I'm just going to sack it off. I just wanted to go out and... Said you well. Said, probably, yeah, could you have did. Been, could have been possibly wrong for me to say that. But at, at this tender age, I'm thinking, this is an opportunity. Because you will come back, you will get fit. That's what not it was. To, not to give up. As soon as I started, not, 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 not halfway through the rehab awesome. at Blackburn, as soon as I started running and stuff again, I knew oh, I'm at the finish line of my injury. I can, I can carry on here. And the physios at Blackburn were amazing with me. And I, it was just talking to them about anything, just talking. So I was just going into digs, sitting in the room and being like, oh, my, my career's done, I haven't even started it yet. Um, just talking about it helped. And the, the Blackburn were amazing with me. The change room there, the boys were good. I was best pals then. We went to college together and stuff because we were only 16, 17. So, um, but Dad's saying, yeah, you are, you are going to, you'll be fine. You are going to play. It's, the best thing I ever done was carry on. And it was a very important lesson learned, actually, um, realising to talk about it after the injuries. Because I don't know where I'd be now if I didn't. Denise, my late wife, died at four minutes past ten on the, on the 10th of July in Salford Royal Hospital. We switched the life support machine off, which was a decision made by the family. And within half an hour, I was in a side room with three nurses and a doctor. And they were asking me if I was okay with what. I was about to embark on the rest of my life without my partner and the children and my mother. And I said, yeah. I said, listen, I'm, 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 I'm the dad, I'm, I'm the organiser, I'm everything. Um, but, and since then, you know, you do make mistakes. You do something to drink or you addiction and everything else. And, but you come out the other end. And that's what I've done. And, and although, yeah, the older generation, there's no handbook. There ain't a handbook for anything. So, as, as Callum just said, the second goal, the most important thing is to reach out and just speak, just communicate, just say anything to anybody. And somebody would get the idea that there's something all right. It's so, so important. Who knows? Football's massive for mental health. I think football's probably one of the one of the best things for it. And fans getting back in and stuff, it actually helps people's mental health. Fans getting back in to watch a game because that's if you're not playing and you're a fan, that's that's your break at the weekend. That's where you go and forget about your problems. Because um, I was I was a fan once before I played, um, and yeah, I think I think football's. I personally, I know it's going to be biased, but it's the best thing for it, honestly. You never know, you might, we might sat here today, trigger somebody somewhere and go, you know what, I'll go and ring, I'll go speak or whatever. That's how, that's how easy it is, that's how easy it is after it is. starting an, an initiative like this. That's how easy, someone can just, how easy is it just sit and flick through your phone and scroll through Twitter? So easy, and someone will just come, come across a video and think, can I'm sat with his dad and my, my dad's not here anymore, so. I'm getting really down about it, I'm just going to pick the phone up and ring my sister and go for a coffee and next thing you know, they started something. They're on the way to saving their, saving their lives. It's that easy. Just, I mean, whatever they think and whatever the thoughts are, there's always somebody, there's always something and somebody somewhere that can help. You, 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 don't, you don't give up on life. Um, it's so fragile, it's so, I know at times it is so unprotected, but it's, it's, it's really not as bad as they might feel or seem at that moment in time. Um, it's not as bad as not being here. Exactly. It's not. Exactly. It might seem like that at the time, but it's not. It's not. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Always. Always is.